A lot of people have been hopping in my comments lately, eager to tell me that they aren't transphobic or homophobic. They're not any kind of phobic. They're not afraid of anything, actually. They're just against indoctrination. They want to let kids be kids. There are ideas that they think aren't appropriate for children to know. And I agree. Let's talk about a few of them. When I was five, the other kids called me girl because they didn't know the word gay yet. They would chase me around the playground and beat me up, calling me girl the whole time because instead of wanting to play sports, I wanted to play superheroes. <laughs> For me, a kid who wanted to be a kid, I wanted to escape into books about King Arthur and Merlin. My favorite part of the week was Saturday mornings when I could see X-Men and Power Rangers, just a kid who wanted to be a kid. But I was also a boy who wasn't being a boy the way my classmates were. I was softer and uninterested in sports, and my friends were girls. I wanted the Barbie toy with my Happy Meal. Nobody taught me this. I didn't have pride displays in Target teaching me. I was just a kid being a kid, and the only way I knew how, because I'd never done it before. But I got beaten up and called names all the same because these children had been taught by their parents that if you're a boy, you should be one thing, and if you're something else, you should be beaten up until you comply. Fast forward a few years, and I'm maybe 12 years old. The internet was still a pretty new, novel thing to have in your house. My family didn't have a computer, which wasn't uncommon at the time. One day, I'm pulled out of class and told there was a special project for me in the principal's office, and I needed to go assist with it. This wasn't a new thing for me. I was an exceptional child. I made straight A's, most of the teachers loved me, and I did every extracurricular available to me. My biggest worry was whether the new cast of Power Rangers would hold my attention as well as last year's, and getting the lead in the school play. Just a kid, trying to be a kid. When I came back to class, every eye stared at me. Everyone was quiet, the teacher, the students, everyone. Come to find out, someone had made a fake email address impersonating me. They used this fake email address to send incredibly graphic emails to the other boys in my class, all signed from me. Sure, I'd noticed an uptick in bullying, but by that point, it had become the background noise of my life, a constant partner living and working alongside me. It caused such a problem that there was concern the police might need to be involved. And if they did, that meant warrants and criminal charges and internet reverse searches or something like that. And whatever passed for juvenile justice in East Texas in the 90s. So me, a kid who was trying to be a kid and go to school and learn and get good grades and be the star of the school play, had to have my learning day interrupted and be given a fake project in the office so some people could come interrogate my entire class and ask whether they'd sent these emails. Which meant an entire class of children talked about me for an hour, relating to sexually explicit emails that I did not make or send or have any part of, but nevertheless got to be associated with. Me, a kid trying to be a kid. One of the other boys in class eventually admitted to it. He was a hero when he got his slap on the hand, because in the eyes of those other boys, he'd gotten me. And despite me not having any involvement in this whatsoever, it further solidified for everyone that I was this monstrous gay thing, which was bizarre because at that age, 12, I hadn't been attracted to anyone yet. I was just concerned about Power Rangers, but they wouldn't let me be a kid. Not long after that, I was in the lunch line waiting to get whatever passed for food in my school's cafeteria, and there were these two guys who decided to play a game of pick on the gay kid. They were calling me names and hinting at what I probably really wanted to do with other boys and saying all sorts of terrible things. And all I was trying to do was get lunch. I couldn't take it anymore. So I remember slamming my lunch tray down on those bar things where you put your tray to fill it up with food and slide it down. I slammed it down over and over and over again and screamed, leave me alone. And then I ran out of the cafeteria. I didn't get to eat that day. I didn't get to be a kid being a kid eating my lunch. Except I'd also caused a scene which adults can't have. The principal decided that there should be some kind of intervention, that we all just needed to sit down and talk about it. So she gave me a detention that lasted for several days, might have been a couple weeks, I don't genuinely remember, where I was forced to eat lunch every day with those two bullies and talk about our issues. Which amounted to them telling me they didn't like me and me promising to change myself into a person they might like. This did not help. Shocking. I love this educator. She was doing what she genuinely thought was right. I know that. But I couldn't be a kid because I had to be the thing everyone talked about. The thing everyone had a problem with. The thing that needed to change once again. This only got worse in high school. Sometime it might have been freshman or sophomore year. I don't exactly remember, but I remember the class. I was in Spanish. A class I liked, that I was interested in, trying to learn, trying to be a kid. And I got done with the day's assignment and I got up to turn it in and one of the football players tripped me and called me a name. His little group of friends laughed as I hit my head on the back counter. It hurt so loud, so I said fuck really loud because it hurt because I'd been tripped and called a fag and banged my head into the counter, but I'd committed the cardinal sin of using a curse word, so I was the one who was punished. 
I was taken out of class and sent to the principal's office and given a lecture about bad language and told that no matter what anyone says or does to me that I am never allowed to fight back and certainly never allowed to use that kind of language because good young Christian men don't say bad words. They say horse feathers. That's what the principal told me to say instead. Horse feathers. Turns out, by the way, saying horse feathers when someone hits you only makes them want to do it again. Who knew? <laughs> As for the boy that tripped me, well, if you know anything about Texas and football players, you know the end of that story. He had to play in the game on Friday night, and there was a rule that if you had received any kind of punishment, you couldn't play. So he didn't get punished. I did. I got to be bent over in the principal's office and paddled with a wooden board by an adult man who said I should have just said horse feathers. When the kid Kids tripped me and called me a fag and hit my head into the back counter. Geography was taught by one of the coaches. I took it because I had a gap in my AP schedule and needed to fill it. Once there was a guy who'd filled a plastic bottle with bits of metal I think he got from shop class, nuts, screws, bolts, other bits of scrap metal that poked through. He threw it at the back of my head one day while the teacher was off surfing on the internet. He always surfed on the internet because he didn't actually care about being a teacher. This was one of those easy A classes and he knew it and made it so. So the kid hurled this homemade metal brick at the back of my head and it hurt and the teacher laughed and when I cried I was told to grow a pair. This time nothing happened to that kid because the school had finally figured out that if they gave a detention to every kid who called me a fag or beat me up or threatened me or hurled something at my head there would be maybe five kids that attended regular classes in the whole school. As we neared graduation, I'd lost faith that my life was ever going to improve. There were rumors that on graduation day, all the guys in my class were going to jump me. <laughs> there were a few kids who told me they wanted to have a hand in ending my life. I, a kid who just wanted to be a kid, was told frequently by the other guys that they hoped I got AIDS. By that point, I still hadn't admitted to it myself who I was. I prayed every night to wake up the same as everybody else. I begged God to take this away from me. Nobody on earth wanted me to be straight more than me because maybe then I could just be a kid. The only reason I survived was because a woman I worked with at my part-time job was a lesbian. She recognized I was hurting, that I was confused and questioning and filled with self-loathing. She didn't ever talk to me about it directly. She never asked me about my own identity. She was just visible and kind and supportive. That visibility, that support meant that I didn't carry through on the plans I had made. That visibility told me that maybe someday there might be a place for me in this world. I would love, love to have been a kid being a kid, but your kids didn't let me. Your kids hear every single time you say that you support gay people, but... They see the boundaries you put around the acceptance of people who aren't like you, but they also see that you don't put boundaries around people who are like you. They hear your reaction to news stories. They pick up your biases and your hatreds. Parents are happy to put an assault rifle in their child's hand who will blithely aim the barrel at their sibling all in the name of a family Christmas photo, but a rainbow on a shirt is indoctrination. You will tell your children that anyone who says Black Lives Matter is a terrorist, and you teach them that Black Lives don't matter or that the mattering comes with limits. You talk about indoctrination. You say you want to let kids be kids. You say that some ideas shouldn't be introduced that early, but you carefully teach your children to hate and to fear and to instill that fear in those that are different, to instill it with violence, to instill it with hateful words or fists if the words aren't getting the point across. See, I agree with you that there are some things we shouldn't be teaching kids. I just think those things should be in the interest of keeping kids alive and safe and healthy. Hope this helps.